When you burn a piece of wood, you're simply releasing the solar energy which the tree captured when it was growing. Now you say, oh, but you shouldn't cut down all these trees. Well, of course, you only cut them as fast as they grow. And the beauty of forestry is unlike agriculture, most forms of agriculture, where you cut all the crop every year, so 100% of the field of wheat is cleared every year, right down to the dirt. Whereas in forestry, you only cut maybe 1 40th of the area of forest each year. And the other 39 40ths remain with trees, young, medium, and old, for all types of birds and animals to live in there. So with forestry, we can actually keep most or nearly all of the biodiversity in the context of providing human needs. Whereas with farming, which is what causes deforestation, where we cut the forest and plant crops and never let the trees grow again, you don't have much biodiversity in agriculture. And yet, the environmental movement attacks forestry. They call it logging. And they say logging is causing the destruction of the forests as if to mean the forest industry. Because of course, farmers don't do logging. Well, actually they do at the beginning when they first clear the forest. And then there's no more forest anymore because they're planting food. Of course, we have to eat. But if you look around the world, you will see that the countries which use the most wood for building and paper, etc are also the countries that have the most stable and growing forest areas. And that includes all of Western Europe and much of Eastern Europe. It includes North America. But if you go to the tropical developing countries where people do not use wood to build their houses, the forests are disappearing because they, wood is not important. So why would you grow trees if you don't want wood? And that is why the more wood people use, the more trees people grow. In the United States, there is the same area of forest today as there was 100 years ago. The population has tripled, and the US and Canada use more wood per, ca per capita than any other people in the world. And yet the forests are healthy and even growing in size. Because every time people buy wood, someone plants a tree to provide the wood for the future. So we have to get a completely different way of looking at this. Because if we continue to have a policy of saying stop cutting trees and stop using wood, we will force ourselves into using more non-renewable materials, more fossil fuels, and the situation will be negative this way. We should be using renewable things. And it it does surprise me that the environmental movement has come to a position where it's all emotional about not cutting trees, and so they are against the world's most important renewable resource. And what is the second most important renewable resource in the world? Who would guess? Wood is first, and number two is hydroelectric energy. 20% of all the renewable energy in the world is from hydroelectric, from blocking a river and making electricity from the water flowing through. This is a renewable resource, but the environmental movement is opposed to hydroelectric dams. They were opposed to China building the Three Gorges Dam and tried to stop it. Thankfully, China went ahead. The Three Gorges Dam is equivalent to 50 coal-fired power plants. That's what they would have built if they hadn't built the Three Gorges Dam. The Three Gorges Dam also prevents the death of thousands, sometimes tens of thousands of people, when bad floods come down the Yangtze River. Now that's not happening anymore. And that dam also allows them to irrigate nearly twice as much farmland to grow food for the hundreds of millions 
people they have. So it served an environmental purpose, it served a social purpose, it served an economic purpose, and then all around it was a good thing to do. But the environmental movement today is opposed to the two most important renewable resources on Earth. This doesn't make any sense to a sensible environmentalist. Because environmentalism at least should be something about renewable. Instead, the main renewable resources that are supported by the environmental movement are small, expensive, and don't work most of the time. I refer to wind and solar energy. This doesn't make any sense. We should be using the renewable resources we have that make sense to use. And wood and hydroelectric energy are the two most important. Yeah, you say in the book that uh, the environmentalist movement right now uh, support only 0.8% of the current global energy production because it oppose uh, hydroelectric and also nuclear. Oh, uh, let's go about uh, to talk about uh, nuclear power. Uh, you change your uh, your mind about uh, nuclear uh, power also because I think that Greenpeace, the, the the name peace in the in the in the in the in the in the, in the name Greenpeace means that it started as a movement for peace. So we, so against um, the 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 the, new, the use of nuclear power in military. Uh, tests, you know, Mururo and so on. So then you, um, for a long time, you have seen uh, nuclear, nuclear power as um, something very bad, you know, and then you change your mind, and you explain why in the book. Uh, can you explain us why you change your mind? What do you think right now about uh, the use of nuclear power for making energy, and whether uh, the Japan um, incident in the, in the, in the in the plant, in the nuclear plant, change your mind or make us any difference for you? I hope you're prepared for a little longer answer on this one. Um, well, actually, it's not that long. Uh, we were afraid of everything nuclear when we were young in the 70s. It was the very height of the Vietnam War. It was the height of the Cold War between the Soviet Union and the United States and the threat of all-out nuclear war was, a, was something we thought about every day. As a young person, that's what caused me to join with other people to protest and to be radical and to be an activist. That's what did it. At the same time, I was also aware, like the rest of us, that all-out nuclear war would also destroy the environment very se severely. So that is how we brought together the idea of peace and environment, green peace. That is one of the reasons why this concept became so powerful, because it combined these two movements, the long-standing peace movement beginning with Socrates and going to Gandhi and Martin Luther King, and the newly emerging consciousness of the environment in the late 60s and early 70s. In, in looking back, of course, I realized that we had made a mistake. That's all it was, a simple mistake. We got a lot of things right in the early years of the movement. To stop the bomb, save the whales, stop toxic waste from going in the air and water, and all of these campaigns were good campaigns that were based on good information and science. But we made the mistake of including nuclear energy with nuclear weapons, as if everything nuclear was evil. Anything with radiation, we wanted to eliminate from the Earth. Now, what about nuclear medicine? Nuclear medicine is using radioactive materials to treat, diagnose millions of people and save a lot of lives every year. It's an important part of medicine. Why don't we ban nuclear medicine because of the radiation that is there? The same, I believe, in thinking now is true of nuclear energy. 